very warm good afternoon to each and everyone. We still meet media team. I'm sure you must be able to hear me. Today we have our resource person, Dr. Richa Singh. So please help me welcome her. And today we are going to take the topic on dry needling for lasting relief from a broad range of chronic pain. So let's welcome Dr. Richa. Without wasting the time, I would uh, hand over the webinar control to Dr. Richa. Yes. And just to inform you that we would be live on YouTube, IAP India channel. You, Dr. Richa. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Suman. And uh, hello, everyone. Hope I'm audible to, for everyone right now. And uh, yes, we are starting the brand new for the lasting relief from a broad range of chronic pain. So hope I assume like few people must be familiar with the uh, dry needling technique must be in practicing also. And uh, so finally, I thought to be like, you know, get into the in short form. So whoever like new into the industry and uh, at the end, you can ask the questions also relevant to this one. So I tried to concise in within uh, half an hour, 45 minutes, we can wind up the things. So this is actually uh, highly efficient and the effective. And uh, why do we need the, you know, needle? So it's like a fairly inexpensive and it definitely works. It does give the results. So that's what is really important technique, which we should practice now our, uh, you know, physiotherapy practice. And uh, another thing is, so, and what is the trigger point exactly? Uh, hey, it's like- hey, Thank you. Hello, yeah, welcome. Uh, discrete focal area within a muscle or it's a fascia where a hyper irritable knot or the band develops. And it's generally painful to the comparison and the can cause to the, you know, local and or the referred pain. And the motor dysfunction also can cause weakness and the stiffness and the potential autonomic changes can occur. So surrounding can be you know, quite irritable areas. And in simple terms, uh, MTP is a stiff localized spot in the muscle belly area and uh, executes the like, you know, tenderness and a taut band of the skeletal muscles. And it uh, can you know, reproduce the patient's pain. Referral pain also can be happen in you know, surrounding areas in the all. And uh, where and what to needle exactly. So obviously each and every structure in the body, we do not needle. So that's is invasive treatment. So we have to be more careful when we doing the needling. So soft tissue painful areas such as the myofascial pain spots where exactly the active area, the patient is complaining of the pain and the muscle knots surrounding areas also we have to see somewhere it's like really hard and not, uh, you can find out and tender points and the tension points and the thickened or the stiffened tissues surrounding where you can feel like, you know, mobility can be get compromised because of that uh, thick, uh, muscle stiffness and all. And post-injury scarring also, we can uh, use the needling in all the surrounding areas. And uh, ligament directly, we cannot, uh, ligament and tendon directly, we cannot needle. And in and around tendon seats, periosteum, all these things, we have to be really careful while we're doing all that surrounding. So the muscle contraction, the, obviously muscle contraction gets compromised in the painful areas. And that was, we start getting the pain everybody. And the sliding filament theory is like a, there's a adjacent thick and the thin filaments slide past each other. And the propelled by the interactions between the myosin lead, the you know, thick filaments and the binding sites of the actin, so thin filament. So these are the act, you know, contraction and relaxation of the muscle happen that was muscle keep moving and active uh, in the surrounding. Classifications of the trigger point. Trigger points are mainly classified in the active trigger points and the latent trigger points. There are many some more subtypes are also there. The common class justification is obviously active versus the latent, and then the you know primary, secondary, or the satellite trigger points are there. So active trigger points are which causes the pain uh, spontaneously, where the patient comes with directly acute pain, very much of, uh, in that area, and uh, without pressure on the muscle only direct pain. It's like they might can have the touch pain also, like very hypersensitive area, and uh, generally it causes the pain in the characteristic referral pattern of the muscles, uh, twitch response on the palpation or the needling and decreased flexibility and some weakness happens. Uh, and uh, latent trigger points are, you know, it uh, do not cause the direct pain, uh, but it's tender to the palpation, the surrounding wherever the patient complains of the pain, the surrounding area, you'll feel that, you know, there's a stiff uh, muscles and all. And may refer the some pain with uh, like, you know, ischemic compression. When you press it, you'll feel that, you know, the patient will complain of the pain. And uh, causes it like uh, decreased flexibility and uh, weakness, and sometimes a local twitch response also. So there will be reflex action from the patient also immediately. When you touch them, they'll respond to the pain. And uh, they may exist in the muscles for the extended period of the time. 
and the following injury could be because of injury and some previous history of the pain and can be activated to become an active tp uh, active trigger point so latent is always there's a chances of later on it can become the you know active trigger area so initially if you see pain pattern for the any patient they complain of one small area then gradually after a couple of months uh, two months same area like you know surrounding more areas like you know they are painful and uh, hypersensitive and that was it's like referred pain start getting like from shoulder till the whole um they start getting the pain so all these things you know gradually keep increasing if they won't rectify at the initial stage only same with classification of the trigger points like primary trigger points secondary satellite central and the attachment trigger points these are again sub types of the trigger points the primary trigger point definitely the highly active area where the pain patient complaining of the pain and uh, secondary trigger points the tip is developed in and around the you know agonist and the antagonist muscles of the uh, to the muscles and uh, that has developed a primary tp and this might can lead to be a primary uh, trigger point later on satellite trigger points are developed in the pain referred areas either from the somatic or the visceral structures could be that area is much more you know depth and uh, initially palpation is really challenging and central trigger points are these are especially on the muscle belly area and the this developed in the region of the dysfunctional end plates near the center of the muscle fibers exactly and uh, uh, this can lead to be you know large area of pain gradually and uh, this end to the whole muscle length whatever the muscle direction is you know like horizontal or the in the longitudinal direction you feel the pain in the whole surrounding and uh, attachment trigger points these are the developed at the musculo tendinous junctions and uh, or the osseous attachments regions due to the tension in the bands from the central tp so what happens sometimes if muscle belly is really stiff already so then surrounding end region start functioning more to compensate the movement and all and that time is to start getting at the end plates also the trigger points so definitely when we are practicing when we uh, do the needling we do not have to go search and think of okay these are the latent secondary which one are. so as much as try to be if patient is complaining of pain we have to find out the surrounding as many as we can figure it out so there could be the trigger points and we can ease out that areas could be if you are not very active pain that point of time but in future it can lead to be rectifying that will give you the better solution in the long term diagnosis of the trigger points so a myofascial diagnosis is generally called the myofascial trigger point syndrome and um, following criteria are used the palpable dot band within a muscle or a tendon nodules could be there local twitch response achieved by the palpation across the trigger points fibers and the bands identify visually or by the palpation also we can see that one local twitch response from the needle penetration is usually seen or palpated on the needle insert when we do the needle insertion then we can see the local twitch response so that shows this so there is a local twitch response is just because of sudden uh, contraction and the relaxation of the muscle in that surrounding because that was slows down there were no function at all and uh, extreme tenderness of a nodule in the tort band with pressure elicits pain referred pain uh, pain referral patterns they get and the patient uh, pain recognition distal pressure of the uh, tendon nodule may uh, reproduce the patient symptoms and the painful range of the motion at the end range especially the trigger points you know usually restrict the pain range of the move, uh, movement and uh, you know produce a pain at the end range of motion so most of the time you notice uh, when they start uh, any joint have the normal uh, flexibility but and end range they will complain of the pain so there is a chances of that you know trigger points are restricting to that area the moment if you offload the tension the trigger points it will offload the muscle tension and that will uh, patient feel the ease in the movement these are the trigger points like uh, assume these are the you know contraction knots and the normal fibers muscles so not necessary each and every fiber have this knots they are very thin structures just to be understanding uh, i'm trying to show off uh, so in this way there are many uh, animated videos are also there which is very helpful to understand the trigger point first so what happened in the needling first of all understanding the trigger point is very important palpation should be very much a thorough uh, shouldn't get confused with the, any other stiffness or the not necessarily all the dot bands or can be the you know, trigger points especially could be some fat globule where we don't need to meet also there is no chances of getting the result if you doing the wrong you know uh, insertion of the needle only and uh, so that's what is we have to be you know find out exactly where could be so as much as the end range will be like lesser if we'll treat also this one it won't give the solution much so as much at, at the center uh, of the you know muscle dot band that is the main reason that you know it spreads the pain in the surrounding so if you can figure it out that one is more convenient to get the better result optimum result in this one 
So these are gradually, you know, keep increasing in different, different muscle fibers over the time period as the, the patient holds the pain longer time. So that's what no need to be directly to ease out each and every one, uh, but definitely if we'll target the major ones, we can get the optimum result and that let on all these things, you know, gradually evolve as much as these movements will start, this will start getting dissolving also. So not necessarily we have to specifically target each and every dot uh, bands in the, while we practicing the needling. Needles are, these are the, definitely the portion, the different, different company has the different sizes for the different set of the muscles. So not necessary. So knowing when we practicing needling, knowing which size of the needle to use for which set of the muscle, that is very much of important. And uh, definitely the needle, all this structure, needle handles, shaft and the root and tip. So definitely these are the, you know, handles. And when we using this one, this generally with the tube comes, so it's a sterile tube. So when we generally hold it and then we start tap, a very strong tap, and then it gets inserted to the muscle area. So tapping is very much of important when we practicing the needling, because when we uh, push the needle inside, that's very much of irritant area will be there superficial. So there's chances of the you know skin get stick with that one, and that time patient will start getting a little irritation of the surface area. So that can lead to be a little uh, you know more painful and discomfort for the patient. So try to avoid that uh, tapping is very much of important when we doing over the the needle insertion, and then we can go ahead with the uh, movement. So single use needle always when we practice the needle, no need to reuse it. We cannot assist in one time only. Need to be disposed uh, carefully with the needle, uh, you know, uh, separate it should be the this thing. And uh, then the guide tube definitely, uh, there are many, many needles which doesn't come with the guide tube, but uh, I'll suggest you better to use with the guide tube, whatever the needle we practice. And uh, solid shaft with the, you know, uh, wound metal or the plastic handle sizes, and the diameter or the gauze 26. So all these different, different, you know, companies has a different set of the diameters and all. So that is we need to be. And uh, basic needling protocols. So patient should be always, of the patient permission is re definitely required. I first need to explain the patient why we are doing and this thing, because this is something invasive and sometimes difficult for the patient to understand the thing. So that is we have to go ahead. Then the sterile technique or the needles only still, we are not supposed to use the needles, you know, again and again for the same patient or uh, for anything. So try to use one time only. And the after needling, like, you know, passively stretch muscle, that is quite important. So that ease out the, you know, and the uh, area and the movement is much more easy. Applying the hot pack post needling soreness, there is chances of either hot pack and cold pack, both we can use depend upon the what set of the population we are treating. Uh, so that we have to be hard pack, hard pack, both we have to take a call, okay, like, you know, if very active population, then we have to treat with the, uh, this thing cold pack only, if very elderly population, then we can use the hard pack, that will ease out. And active range of motion is very important, post treatment, medically, so little bit of stretches and all, is offload the tension and soreness will be come down. It's a basic needling pro protocol, definitely we should know the localized trigger points first and the palpation grip. Uh, can be pinched or the flat palpation depend upon which set of the muscles we are targeting based on that we have to go. You can a strong needle tap in surgery is very important and uh, there could be like no light hemostasis and uh, no bleeding and all in the surrounding. Little bit of redness will be there, uh, visible redness may or may not be. And uh, then uh, we can, you know, needles, the trigger point and uh, probing, flicking and the uh, twisting that these are the movements when we put the needle inside, then we go ahead with the things and depends upon what we require. Based on that, we can uh, take a call. And uh, then depth and the angle is very important when we're needling uh, because all the muscles have different set of directions. So knowing the muscles origin and surgeon on which nerve supply is quite important superficially and not very much of depth, but definitely superficially should know. So that was, uh, because there's a different set of the needles for the different set of the muscle groups. So that uh, we need to be work on. So if that visibility is there and uh, it will be ease out the correction, there won't be any mistake to be like, no, for the, and depend upon the person's, uh, you know, like overall the, his obese or the average body weight and all these things, muscle size and uh, based on that, we have to decide the needle, uh, which needle and which area we are palpating and everything. Basic needles for reasons for failure of the treatment is uh, 
mostly the needling of the latent TB, not the primary active. So could be if on the first, the primary active ones you want target and only target the other uh, like uh, trigger points, there could be no result. So first of all, definitely important point is the major one which is troubling the pain first, need to ease out that one. That can lead to the soreness post-treatment much more compared than the normal, but yes, have to be mm, go ahead. And the, then the needling of the latent trigger point, not uh, the thing, and the missing the trigger points only to the band. If you yeah, are trigger point, you're not doing and rest of the any other, just the dot band you're treating, and could be that not the actual reason for the pain. So there's chances of not getting the result. And adequate hemostasis means the movement haven't enough for the thing, could be very stubborn trigger point can be happen. And then it gives the little takes time to ease out, not performing the active range of motion after the treatment. And obviously, movement is very much of important. If post treatment they'll do the movement, it will be ease out. Regular passive home stretching, if like too much of a passive home exercise, or that also can lead to be the soreness more. So these are the thing instructions very much of important for the patient to get the to get the best uh, outcome or the result. Complications of the dry needling. It's like relatively safe provided sterilized needles used, but yeah, risk are minimized with a good knowledge of anatomy is very much important for the invasive treatment. And complications can be all this vascular attack, convulsion, we rearrest, all this happens, but yeah, have to keep it in the mind. Sometimes patients' anxiety also because obviously needle, no one loves to be get needling done. So that will make a, you know, a patient might can have the needle phobia. So, and the visceral damage is if the wrong size of the needle have used. So, and hemorrhage and the pregnancy is definitely the contraindication, absolutely. So, these are the things we have to be take care of while we are practicing the needling. Needle safety, definitely disposable needles only need to be used. Sterile techniques, skin disinfectant and gloves, definitely used when we're practicing the needle. Because so needle infection can cause later on any other problems and all. And correct disposable needle disposal, disposal like, you know, straight into the sharp pins and the correct disposal of the uh, sharp pins are very much of important. So not to get harm even uh, who is practicing on the other staffs of your clinic or the hospital. And uh, important anatomical consideration, definitely like when we need link, we must be aware of the following anatomical positions to avoid the matriotic. These are the structures we are not supposed to do direct uh, needling. So definitely target the major muscles only. And uh, that's the reason the nerves, arteries, we should know the nerve course and all those things. This is out the you know, complications. So and the visceral structures. So that's what uh, there should be, you know, idea of, you know, where it can start and all this. So that size of the needle, so that is in making you have to do with the practice. And it's invasive treatments, so we have to much more careful to not to get any sort of a complication because treatment is based on the OPD basis. We are not uh, any inpatient, this thing, the GA, we do not do, we are not using any anesthesia and all to use this needle. So that was, we have to be much more careful while we practice it. And the foramens and penetrations and joints directly, we do not do needling to such uh, structures. So that very careful we have to be. Contraindications and the causes definitely needle fovea. If patient is not willing to be, no need to be go ahead with the thing because it's invasive. With the anxiety, instead of getting the better outcome, they might will feel more soreness and uh, any of the any other feeling also they'll have the weakness or something. Uh, they'll think it's because of the needling only. So instead of getting the better outcome, they will go in more weakness and the pain and also try to be avoided if the patient is not ready. If patient has a needle phobia, definitely ask very clearly uh, in the beginning. In ability to give consent, definitely use the consent form, OPD consent form for when we're practicing the dry needling. And uh, so yeah, if patient is not mentally stable or something, some reason cannot give the, uh, you know, their consent, so definitely avoid such treatment. And malignancy definitely is the absolute contraindication. So do not touch any cases of the malignancy either with treatment going on and all definitely no need to be continue with the dry treatment. You can use any other pain management or other thing, but not the dry Acute medical conditions or the any open wound, directly open wound, we do not need done. And um, severe arteriosclerosis, uh, definitely we have to avoid. And uh, limb with lymphedema directly to the edematous area, no need to do needle because obviously it will increase more of circulation. It will be opposite result instead of getting the better outcome. Recent joint replacement, uh, that area definitely we have one to at least after three to four months have to see that to be condition how it's progressing based on that have to take a call. And uh, that to be in the other surroundings you can do surround exactly the knee uh, replacement, uh, whatever the joint replacement area we are not supposed to do immediately. So later on, after a year, something for scar adhesion breakage and definitely can be done, but uh, not uh, within three to four months. Uh, 
definitely to avoid that surrounding. And it is the sensory neuropathy, advanced osteoporosis, so very much of, you know, advanced osteoporosis have to avoid just to be by chance, like, uh, because mostly it's a very lean muscles were there at that time, and uh, the chances of getting the, you know, uh, needle get, can get pretty, it doesn't penetrate the bone at all, but it still need to be avoided. Uh, extreme uh, diabetes, high level of the diabetes and all, anticoagulants, pregnancy definitely epilepsy if can control epilepsy history of epilepsy asthma and all is you definitely need to know so that uh, if anything you can get to know so these are the things because sudden attacks can happen so at least you should have an idea like when they had the last episode of the, the thing so that was if they are in the very much of uh, not in active phase then you can go ahead with the treatment but yeah patient consent is very much of important in if they are uh, handling this situation Needle stick injuries can happen. It's a very low, uh, you know, risk uh, if like you no know, correct techniques we are using, but there is chances of, especially for the metal practitioners only. So HIV risk is also low. It's like you know other viruses such as hepatitis is the higher. If exposed to the, by chance, if you get exposed to be like you know, needle prick by chance, you practicing and something happened, you put your own hand or something, and so it's like a clean area with the alcohol and the water first. You know, thoroughly if the mucous membrane. And explain to the patient if necessary requirement is there. So all these things, precautions definitely we need to take. So a few trigger points, uh, you know, targeted major muscles I have thought to be like you now to so showcase. So these are the obviously we know key traps. You know, it starts from the base and then you know it goes as a diamond shape to the whole area. But not uh, there are the these are the you know wherever the just you can see the cross the thing means there's the most probable areas where uh, chances of the trigger points which you get and active pain. Uh, these are the area. So try to be, uh, when we're targeting these muscles, so definitely these are the most prevalent areas and not necessarily this is the only can be. So always, uh, as much as you palpate and then figure it out, it will be the best result you can get. But yeah, these are the most prevalent areas where you might can get the trigger points. And this is very common for the anybody, like you know, if either they are active or inactive, both the way there's chances of getting the pain in this round. Trigger points can be over here. And not necessarily only for the traps, and there are other muscles too. So all can be the group of muscle, which is, you know, uh, getting taut band over there and that's increasing the pain in this area. Because this uh, junction gets used in each and every shoulder movement or setting, whatever activity you do, they do activity, fine movements or the active every time. So there's a chance that the right side is more probable compared than the left because mostly the right is the active side. Then again, the next is the left wrist capillary. There's a chances of, you know, because it's uh, rotating over here. And this always with the traps and left wrist capillary go together in this polis. More of anterior side you might can get. And this leads to be indirectly the pain in whole surrounding. And sometimes it happens if you work on the traps and still you feel that patient is complaining of pain. So there's chances of other surrounding muscles. And then the left wrist capillary play a great role over there. So need to be, whenever we're working for any pain relief, not we have to target only one muscle. But all the group of the muscles to ease out the offload the muscle tension and absolute pain over there. Uh, then sternocleidomastoid one is very common for the all set of the neck pain and the movement is stiffness very common. So these are the areas where we can needle and this might can lead to all these areas with the referred pain they might can get to be. Even this is stiff then they might can get the headache also because of this stiffness. So that we have to be definitely careful and uh, we have two needle and the generally different size of the needles we use one five and the two five is most commonly which you use for this area and uh, but yeah so whenever they're complaining of the surrounding pain and all try to figure it out ki where could be the root cause and the surrounding muscles also need to be off road attention and uh scm for positioning is like you know supine laying all the head side flex position and all this thing we can do so that based on that, we have to avoid all you know always the middle one third of the muscles to be the move uh, into jugular vein. Uh, can you know so the pinch of grist toward the finger is very much of important. So we knowing the you know internal structure that surrounding is very much of important when we targeting the muscle over there. So we have to be very careful when we targeting the muscle. We should know all the surrounding you know, artery and veins so that we can you know figure out which one we have to target. Muscle is the most superficial structure where it's like you know, just for the skin, fascia, then we can, but uh, all the nerve stems. So needle length accuracy is very much of important, knowing which size we can use for the, what, you know, uh, age group of the patients and uh, depend upon the, they are more healthy side or the lean muscle. So that means we have to decide the needle size. Always that varies person to person, not necessarily same needle size can be. So always two to three needle sizes are very for same set of the muscles. 
So that was you have to go ahead with the things. But yeah, these areas are suggested. Somebody very confident, then only to go ahead with the SEM. So again, like levator scapula, there's a as I explained you, so all these things you know, that whole surrounding can lead to the pain. So need to be target uh, these muscles always with go with the traps also together, and then we can offload the muscle tension and the surrounding pain. This might can lead to the referred pain to the upper arm too. Again, in this one, side length position, prone also, you can go ahead with the thing, depend whatever the comfortable position and depend upon your clinical area and all those things. And either laying on the sideline of the scapula to be you know, needled to lift the scapula or uh, on the you know, opposite side, we can do. So look at the upper portion, you know, attaching to the trigger point uh, C1, C2. So that area we have to target this one, you know, offload the muscle first. And then uh, when we're tapping the needling, that will be more convenient. And uh, uh, selective bands with the you know upper four cervical vertebrae and needle towards the superior angle of the scapula of the lower trigger points, pincer grip or for the you know mid belly. So depend upon you can see the whole structure. If like this is the major uh, muscles, whenever we uh, palpate and we try to needle, uh, we always say okay traps and this muscles group. But uh, first of all, pain doesn't happen because of one muscle only. Surrounding muscles are involved, and when we uh, needling, we cannot do only for the Traps definitely these chances of rhomboids and the major minor and the surprise matters in fact and everything get involved. So definitely we're treating the trapezitis mainly at this junction, but we have to figure it out all the muscles to wear all the surrounding pain is there. And this again, the rhomboids are very common to get uh, pain this thing, and this might can lead to the uh, continuous pain. And you know, whenever they are, especially whenever in the sitting job, long hour of sitting and all the triggers. So it's like you know all the muscles are sandwiched uh, on you know, top of each other and also when we penetrating the needle size is very much important to target all set of the muscles if sometimes it happens that very small needle few using we are not targeting the actual muscle fibers only because the taut bands are more in the deeper muscles than to be on the very superficial side superficial side is quite easy and you know move, movement is there always chances of the other taut bands and the of tightnesses will go deeper muscles gets you know tighten much more faster than the very superficial muscles so that's what we have to be tried to target the needle size is very much of you know but uh, you have to be careful need to decide for each set of the muscles so we can target the all to put the muscles and ease out the offload the muscle tension to get out of the pain rhomboids again this is the most probable areas where the trigger points can happen we can offload the hand we can keep it up also, or else we can keep it down and then we can target uh, needling area. So always try to be offload the muscles so that we can you know, push the needle over there more easily in this area. And uh, again, surprise spinatus, so there's a chance of more, mostly to obviously here we are targeting for the, our uh, the thing, trapezius also, and then we can target the surprise spinatus together that time. Same way, deltoid, most travel areas, recuredalis, everything. So all these are the most travel areas for them, the referred pain, also the surrounding. So if surprise mass can lead to the um, pain also of arm and all, so try to be ease out the surprise mass easily with the trapezius, and then it will offload the tension in the arms too. In fast panitus, again, can refer to the whole arm. The pain can be till the fingers they might can have. So all these things offloading the muscle tension working on this surrounding of the muscles can offload the tension in the pain. So whenever a patient complains of pain in the arm or the elbow also, the chances of starting from the entire scapular muscle area and the pecs and everything. So try to first offload the tension uh, in the surrounding of the muscle entire scapular area to offload the pain in the arms too. That will be give the better result outcome than the treating the localized area only over there. So whenever uh, any muscles in the needling, we have to treat the arms. So we have to think of the nerve course and root. Based on that, we have to start palpating. If anything to the ha happens, to start palpating from the neck area only, and then we have to see to what all the muscles we have to target. That will give the long outcome. With acute pain, if somebody having, obviously it will ease out, but not for the long term. Again, patient will start active movement and all these chances of getting the pain again to the same area. And first mantis, again, stabilization of the humeral head and the lateral rotation referred, uh, referred to the mid deltoid region of the front of the shoulder, side leg with one arm and the flexion or flexion in the pillow depend upon the position. The positioning is totally depend upon to offloading, think you have to need to offload the muscle 
and that's the thing how much space and all in surrounding so you have to make a space key that positioning you have to go ahead key. whichever muscle targeting need to be uh, that is off your totally it should not be very much of contracted again ts minor is more to the you know sideline this can lead to the referred pain to the arm or forearm so this need to be targeted very carefully again all these things we have to go more inclined because that way you can target the motor muscles very over there Trace major muscle again, just uh, on the each other that the thing. So the moment we are doing, and we can you know offload the muscle, and uh, we can target incline the needle sizes will be different for each and every area. And uh, as we have mentioned, we are knowing the each and every muscle's anatomy, function of supply, effort when where it could be, and what are the precautions we have to take. So these are the very much of important aspect for each and every muscles which one we target. So just to be short out the few muscles only I have. Picked up over here to result because mostly the upper back pain is quite common and uh, we get all the referred pain to the upper body because of this one, especially more in the both the arms and the right is active sites. We get more over there and uh, it's like you know uh, when the pop trail is major, major we have to target definitely it's like protect the shoulder girdle and depress the scapula. So you know all the surrounding pain may be mimic with the angina, but yes. Uh, we can target and again the needle size matters. We have to be more specific in that <clears throat> sizing what you using over there, and um, that was and uh, generally rounded shoulder also because of this thing. So when we are treating all this um, shoulder conditions and all, we have to definitely target the pectoralis major or, and minor too. So offload the total muscle. So that was uh, all the scapula get stabilized and then the pain free person be pain free in the long term, and. Uh, uh, this is for again the subscapularis, and uh, and this we can see. Uh, this we can see again the referred pain we can have till the wrist and arm different, different areas. So this would when we be having any short of the arm pain we have to be target in the surrounding, and uh, then we can ease out the all the set of the muscles to be offload the muscle tension and the pain. So there is chances of all these trigger points might can. can Say always the nerve compression, and then they, they get irradiating pain till the finger. And uh, so always, if whole nerve force, we have to ease out the muscles, trigger points that will offload the tension on the nerves, and finally, it will offload and uh, sensation and everything will be eased out over there. So these are the thing and needle sizes, obviously. Again, the deltoid, again, it's like very much of prominent anterior fiber, middle fiber, posterior fiber. So you have to see where the pain we are getting. And based on that, we have to be uh, beside which side of needle. Again, this depends upon the person's, you know, how much weight, height, and all those things. That was we have to target the muscle belly and different size of the needles so we are using for this one. Most prevalent trigger points are obviously deltoid is more superficial muscle for the upper arm. So we can target easily and uh, this might can then we can same time uh, we can target the biceps head so too when we targeting and uh, same way uh, when we targeting the posterior deltoid you can target the tricep uh, head too we can ease out the muscle tension and uh, biceps again elbow flexion and supination the positioning is totally depend upon the uh, what, what how much space but that muscle need to be totally offload the tension so that will ease out the tension over there and uh, referral to the local muscle area, anterior deltoid, and the anticubical space. So this might can lead to the uh, radiating pain till the elbow. So first we have to start working on the pecs and then on traps, uh, levitus capillary pecs, and then the upper arm muscles so that offload the tension on the hand, and then it will pain relief absolutely. Biceps, again, same way we have to be now, of course, everything should be very much clear. On that one, which area we have to target and all. And um, then triceps, like extension of the elbow and the shoulder and uh, referral to the posterior arm, forearm and the scapula. So then can be related to So when we targeting, again, we have to be target the absolute muscle belly. There's chances of getting the trigger point or more of the medial over here. This might can refer pain to the, till the rest. And that is, we have to be target the upper junction also. We have to be ease out and then at the uh, mid belly also the muscle, we have to offload the tension. So that is out the completely the tension and then the pain relief uh, will be there. Brachialis, again, all these are, you know, you can see the, if you work group of the muscles, definitely there's a chances of, you know, all the trigger points overlapping on each other. So not necessarily the individually muscles getting the trigger points. The trigger points can be the group of the muscles together. So same spot can be the two the muscles targeting together. 
because as i told you muscles are you know in layering on each other so that which we have to target the same time same trigger points can be to be like you know two three muscles you can target so that's why needle size is very important to target the one shot only all set of the muscles because till the time the deeper uh, trigger points we want offload actual pain want to uh, ease out the, from the body so that's what we need to target the more deeper ones if very much of superficial only ease out we won't get the optimum result uh, while treating this uh, trigger point area brachialis again the superficial pain can radiate so that also elbow flexion position and all so this we can do in the sitting also and lying down position also best on the comfort area how much is uh, this thing patient is comfortable in that one so both the positioning we can go ahead with that so again, for each and every muscle helps to knowing the precautions and all these referred pain where can be nerve supply to this thing. So that way we can correlate with the clinical conditions when the patient comes to the clinic. So we can you know uh, work on that muscles particularly like what all the muscles we can decide to what all the muscles we have to work on. And then the supinator muscles are very small one which can lead to be pain. So these are the mainly I kept for the all the muscles so we can go common extension group. These chances of these are the mostly uh, chances of at this spot we getting the pain and the referring to the hand over there. So that's we have to offload the tension at the muscle belly directly. So that will offload the pain. Clinical conditions. These are the just a few clinical conditions I have picked up uh, for the upper body and the lower body uh, both. Upper body mainly the shoulder joint trapeziitis. Uh, rotator cuff injury, frozen shoulder, and all sort of intercapular muscle, myofascial syndrome, everything we can pick up with this thing, ascium tightness, and the uh, elbow joint again, tennis elbow, golf yeah. elbow, yeah. all these are quite common. And uh, right. the joint, carpal tunnel syndrome, and... Uh, Excuse okay. me, Dr. Richard, Dr. Suman yeah. here. Uh, yeah, we are running short of time, so I would request you to, if you can kindly wind up a little early. Yeah, it's almost done. It's almost done. Last two slides right. only. Thank That's you. It. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I was yeah. Uh, low body conditions, uh, low back, low back or disc prolapse, and the hip joint sciatica. This thing, and these are the few I have picked up. There are many in this same category. We can work on all these clinical conditions. So that's what is useful technique we, we can go for. And uh, these are the few. Just a video. It will be quickly played. There's the neck condition and different different condition I've taken. That was the wrist, and this was for the neck. What I've done. This for the SCM. Few videos just for the understanding purpose. I've just kept. This is the marks for the cupping marks because few sessions has been done with the cupping too. Thank you. I hope Dr. Suman, I was on time. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Yeah, Absolutely, actually. I know it has been going so interesting and uh, I'm sure the participants also must have learned a lot from you. Yeah. But unfortunately, today we have back, back sessions lined up. Yeah, so, yeah, no you know, I would not waste time. If anyone yeah, has sure. any questions to ask from Richa, please feel free to put it on chat box. Yeah. She can quickly uh, answer your queries. Okay. Stop share. I think there is. Yes, friends, you can use a chat box function and you can enter your queries. Okay, or else they can ask me later also on the this thing, same, they can post it and we can go ahead. Yes, they can. So or someone has asked, question. yes, yeah. duration of treatment, Mr. Akram That's has depend asked. upon what all the number of the muscles you're targeting. And putting the needle for the 10 minutes or something doesn't make difference. Obviously, the how much twitches you get. And it's like maximum for the one muscle, you can say uh, two to three minutes is enough for each and every muscles, one muscle, if you can say. So depend upon how many number of the muscles you're targeting same time. So based on that, it will go. Never cross more than 15 minutes the whole treatment, actually. 
duration, how trigger points are formed. Obviously, the, all the taut bands which I have explained. So that is all the muscle fibers start, you know, uh, lack of oxygen and over there, say hypoxic area gradually start creating the area which is not very much of useful, uh, like, you know, in day-to-day -day activity using. So that was its uh, trigger points are, uh, you know, creates over there, uh, surrounding. Any other question? I think we are done, Dr. Suman. So we can go ahead with the thing. Yes. Yes, thank you so much. Now we have Dr. Yavar. I would request Dr. Yavar to kindly give word of thanks. Do we have Dr. Yavar here? Dr. Yavar, you are panelist now. Yes. No. Yes, Dr. Yava, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, okay, sir. Yeah. Hello. Yes, good. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can Thank hear you. you. The... Clear. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am, for this wonderful experience. Uh, sorry, ma'am, due to the technical defect. Due to technical defect, uh, Dr. Master Shabhi, sir, I see in our Zoom, could not introduce you. So I, Yavarman, Dr. Yavar Manzoor, co-chairperson, j &K, Government Affairs Committee, introduce you in a short. Uh, Dr. Richaman, who is well-known, he is the founder, who, who is founder of Perfect Bounce-based Vision of Pain-Free World and Healthy India, and also district head of IPWC, Bengaluru, and a well-known and a well-known international dry kneeling practitioner who conduct many webinars in India or outside India. She has also worked with Olympic players and received much more awards like much more awards like Physios, Physiotherapist Award in Theracon 2018 and also Youth Icon Award Leadership and Einstein of Physio Award. We thank you, ma'am, you, and also we thank you to all the participants who joined us today and also IP technical team under the guidance of IP president, Dr. Sanju, sir, Dr. Ruchi, ma'am, IP women's head, and Dr. Nadia Mim for IP women's head, j &K. And also thank you, Suman, sir, for giving us this platform. Hope to meet you again, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank Dr. you very Yavar much. And, and thank uh, you, Dr. Suman, also for the hosting and everything. Thank you, thanks so much. Thank you, thank you so much, friends. I would just like to request you, uh, those who have attended today's webinar, kindly subscribe to IAP India YouTube channel and also subscribe IAP India on Facebook page and Instagram and Twitter as well. And that would help you to keep updated about various webinars in the future. So thank you very much. Uh, and congratulations, Jammu and Kashmir IAP branch for holding such a wonderful and informative session with Dr. Richa. And uh, please stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you very much. We will end the session now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, sir.